and uh, you know, we haven't talked in a while. And I, I've seen something. I can't explain it. I can't describe it. It's crawling inside my head and I can't escape it. I need your help. I need my sister before... I can't hold it off any longer. It's coming for me and I don't know... What? Why it... God, please. Sorry, dude. Just made a wrong turn, don't shoot me. Oh shit, I'm stuck. I think you're in neutral. Alright. Wait, I'll go middle of nowhere. Is this it? Oh, very nice. Ready? I think so. Let's get unpacked, see if they'll come over. Let's do this. Let's do it. Yeah, no, we're, we're not too far, Mom. We're just right outside of town. Um, I'll text you the address, okay? Um, I was hoping you and Dad would come see us for a little bit. Tim would love to see you. Awesome. Alright, yeah, I love you too, Mom. Okay, bye. I told you they'd come over. Okay, can we please stop at this place downtown? We need to get you some new shirts. Oh, come on. No, you've had that same wardrobe since college, Tim. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. So many. So many Oh, oh, so we missed you. Oh, we missed you too. Sweetheart. Come on in. Thank you. Dad's getting He's long. coming. Yeah, he's coming. He just had to check something on the car. Uh, Mom, this is Tim. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Nice Dad. to meet you. Oh, we missed you so much. Honey. I see you guys. So glad you Um. The camera? Yeah, this was the camera. Um, yeah, just, uh, come on in. Um, so I was hoping to talk to you guys a little bit about everything that happened. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, um, mom, let's start with, I mean, yeah, mom, <laughs> start with yes, me. Yes, Um, okay, tell, tell us who you are. Okay, my name is Sandra Mason, mother of Dakota Mason. Dakota was always an, what's that, just give me the word. Inquisitive? I'm sorry, <laughs> yes. You always called him inquisitive. I know that. Should we start again? No, no, I'm just okay. Going. Okay, okay. Sandra. Dakota was a really good husband. He, you and Dakota loved to explore, and play with your father's camera. We had a happy life when your kids were young. 
How was Dakota as a child? He was such a sweet boy. I can remember when we brought him home. You were so scared to hold him. You thought you would break him. I can even remember when he ran his first fever. I was scared to death. You were never sickly like Dakota. Dakota was always sick. He always needed help. I remember we had a good childhood growing up. We had fun. Was there ever a time that made you feel different? When you left for school, Dakota was alone. And he was sad for some time. But something happened greater than that, you know? Something that propelled his isolation, provoked it. He stopped coming for dinner, missing our calls. We were worried about him. But we never thought, under any circumstance, that we would never see him again. And that is what happened. How, um, how has Dad been through all of this? He has been okay. We have all struggled, Amanda. Do you, do you need to take a break? Yes, yes, I do. Tell us who you are. You mean like a just an intro or? Yes, that exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I never thought you would interview me. Okay, just be yourself. Okay. Tell us who you are. My name is Mark Mason, father of Dakota Mason. And um, tell us who uh, Dakota was. Dakota was my son. I mean, plain and simple. And he, he really looked up to me. And, and I tried to show him everything about, you know, about being a, a strong person. You and, you and Dakota were wonderful kids. I mean, the, the best, really. I mean, parents mm -hmm. couldn't ask for, for better children. <laughs> um, okay. um, how, how did the investigation unfold when you first started looking for Dakota? Oh, it was... It was immense. A lot of community support. We had, there were 10 people the first day, um, around 20 the, the second day. And after the, the third day, there was over 50 people that mm -hmm. helped out. Um, and what, tell me what you were thinking throughout all of that. You know, after we, we couldn't find Dakota, after the, the first two days, we were, we were so worried. I, we just couldn't believe that he would leave without, without saying anything. And that's what, that's what has made this so hard. I mean, terrible things like that, they just don't, well, they just don't happen to, to people like us, right? Your mom and I, we, we did everything correct as parents and, and for this to happen, What, what do you think happened to Dakota? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, you know me, I, I'm the kind of guy that, that has to see something to, to believe it. Yeah. And I, I, can't, 
can't say what happened to Dakota. Kennedy knew more, though, more than what she was telling us. That that I do know. Who who's Kennedy? Oh, Kennedy Barnes. That was that was Dakota's girlfriend when he went missing. Was she ruled out as a suspect? Yeah, eventually she was. Um, she spoke to the detective working your brother's case. Okay, and what was the detective's name? Anthony Drake. Well, we, we called him Tony. And, uh, you know, he, he checks in with us every so often. Does he still work here locally? Yeah, as far as I'm aware. Okay, and do you happen to have Kennedy's number that we can get a hold of her? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I have it. Okay. Where were you, Amanda? What do you mean? During all this, why were you so hell bent on, on being gone that all, all this was, all this was lost to you? You, you know what, Dad? I had a lot to process, too. Um, something obviously happened here that just left me wanting more, and um, I just... I got lost in separating myself. Was it worth it? Amanda? All the, all the ignored phone calls? The ignored text, not coming, not coming home on breaks. I mean, did you find what you're looking for? No, no, it wasn't worth it, Dad. I, I fought like hell to become something more than this whole situation, and I just. What was that? I lost sight of what was important. Okay. What was important? You, Mom, Dakota. We love you so much, Amanda. We always have. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, at least you're here now, and that. that that helps us a little bit. And I'm, I'm sure your mom enjoys it. I hope so. Well, any other, any other questions at all? I, I'm so sorry I took us down no, such a person. No, it's, it's fine, Dad. Um, I just I think we've got, we've got everything we need here. Great. Hey Amanda. No. Sorry guys. Oh. Still almost new. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a schedule to keep. All right. Love you so much, honey. Where are you going next? Well, I was gonna ask you guys if um. If you remember where uh, Dakota was working when he disappeared, he washed dishes at the Hockey Hill restaurant down on Field Road. <laughs> it's still there. Okay. All right. Well, I was thinking ahead in that way and talk to some of the people he worked with, maybe. Good. He had friends. Well, we'll get out of their hair and let these two kids do what they need to do. Okay. We love you, Amanda. I love you too. Nice meeting you both. Oh. Nice good, meeting you. Good, good to meet you. Good to meet you, sir. Take care. Bye, Please. Love you guys.
everybody would have a few minutes to talk about him um, um, on camera too. Yeah, um, let me go grab a manager. Can you hear me just fine? Yeah, sounds good. We are ready to roll. All right. Uh, so let's start out, just uh, tell us who you are and how you knew Dakota. I'm Aubrey. I'm Dan, and uh, we worked with Dakota. For a few years, yeah? yeah. A few years. Okay, and uh, what did he do here? Uh, he uh, ran a dishwasher, and he also closed up the dining room whenever we turned out the lights at night. Um, did you guys ever hang out outside of work? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes uh, I grab beers down the road, have a good time, you know, whatever. Yeah. And did you know Kennedy? Oh yeah, yeah, I knew Kennedy. She was uh, she was everywhere. She uh, she worked here for a while. Um, that's how they met. Uh, can you tell me how Dakota was leading up to his disappearance? Well, he he quit you know, a couple months before. Well. He just stopped showing up. Did either of you see him in the weeks leading up to him going missing? Yeah, I did. Well, can you tell me a little bit about how he was? Um... Yeah, I, uh, I went to his place and it was a mess. There was a wall with drawings and shit. Like what you see in movies, like crazy type person shit. Like, and, uh, I mean, honestly, he just looked tired. Um, Greg wanted me to come over and check on him. I was worried about him. Do you know what happened to uh, all his stuff, his drawings, all of his belongings? Well, Kennedy moved out a couple weeks after. A lot of people were suspicious, but their lease was ending, what was she supposed to do? Right. Um, that's it. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to talk to us. And of course. Uh, if you think of anything else, you've got my number, so just give me a call, okay? Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Please leave your message. Hi, Kennedy, this is uh, Amanda Mason, um, Dakota's sister. I, um, we're, we're in town for a few days and I was just wondering if, uh, if you have time, if you'd be willing to sit down and talk with us for a minute. Um, thanks. Bye. Hopefully she calls back. Uh, do you remember the name of that detective who was on the case? Uh, Drake, right? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna call my dad and, uh, see if he's got the detective's number. Sounds like a plan, boss lady. Okay. Um, thank you for meeting us here on such short notice. It's my pleasure, Amanda. I mean, I don't know, it was really last minute, but, um, the people that own this cabin, they said that we could film here, so... It's quite all right. I brought all the records and files I think we would need. All right, well, let's get started. Um, tell us about the investigation surrounding the disappearance of my brother, Dakota. Wow. Um, Dakota Mason, where would you like me to start? I'll well, just start at the beginning. Um, and if I think of any questions, I'll just speak up. Makes sense. Ah, <sighs> see. So, Dakota Mason, he was reported missing around May 18th, 2019. His girlfriend, Kennedy Barnes, reported missing first. Then his parents, well, your parents, came in and filed a report after. What was the response like to his disappearance? Well, I was assigned the case after the first officer took the report. Uh, we visited his apartment. All of his things were in line. His personal belongings were all intact. Uh, it wasn't evident to me that he had left on his own. And then there was a search party organized. Yes. One of the local firefighters was certified in search and rescue. He put together a search area and we followed his lead. How long did you guys work for? 
three days to comb the search area. That includes going back through it twice to make sure we didn't miss anything. What What is the area like out there, terrain-wise? Pretty navigable. I tell you, it's really easy, no issues whatsoever. It stayed on property we purchased uh, several decades ago. There's an old barn, several decapitated buildings. That's where we really thought we would find them, but we were wrong. Were you able to locate anything at all? Well, yes. We found his keys and his cell phone. It was dead. That's it. Well, what happened to his stuff? We gave it to Kennedy Barnes. We contacted your parents and she came in and said she was given permission to take it, so we gave it to her. Well, he's still missing. Why would you just give up his stuff? Well, we cleared her of any wrongdoing. She had an alibi for that evening. There was no reason to hold on to it, and she had been his longtime living girlfriend. What do you think happened to my brother? Amanda, I believe he is no longer with us. So, that's it? He just walks out into the woods and vanishes into thin air? There's only so much we knew about him. Only so much. He was not well. But he's got to be out there somewhere, right? He is. He is out there somewhere. People don't just vanish into thin air. Well, thank you for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, the search and rescue coordinator, can you, can you put us in contact with him? Yes, ma'am. I will have him call you today. Just leave me your number. And Amanda, my door is always open. I appreciate it. Um, who was the responding officer? Uh, Brad Nelson. Um, does he still work with the department? He does. Can we talk to him? I'll see if he is on duty and have him call you. We're good. Can you, uh, just start out telling me, uh, your name and your occupation, please? Yeah, sure. Um, Officer Brad Nelson of the Wither Falls Police Department. And are you familiar with my brother's case, Dakota Mason? Uh, yes, ma'am, I am. Um, are you the one the, uh, that did the initial search of my brother's apartment? Uh, I did. Uh, we got a call of a missing persons report. Uh, Search, search and rescue took over, uh, found his vehicle, uh, a few items in the vehicle that the, I think it was a, maybe a shirt, a couple of items of clothing, stuff like that. So nothing weird. Nothing major or okay. um, unusual. What about his, uh, impart, uh, his apartment? Were you the first one out there and... Um, what was your impression of what was going on with him at the time? Well, when I initially got to the apartment, uh, it looked like nobody had been living there. Maybe it had been occupied by what people call squatters, homeless people that take over abandoned houses. Uh, clothes all over the place. Um, just the apartment looked really distressed. Were there any other things that stood out to you? Uh, there was, I found some drawings uh, that seemed a little weird. Uh, there was a stack of drawings. You know, I ruffled through them for a second and I didn't know if they had anything to do, if you knew anything about them or if they were any significance, but they just, to me, they seemed a little Oh. Yeah. Uh, do you know what happened to those? Where, what happened to all of those things? Did the police department take those? Uh, ma'am, at, at this point I really can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think happened to my brother? Um, whatever happened to your brother, I hope for his sake and for yours that he's safe. Hey, Kennedy. Yes, sir. This is Amanda. Um, I'm, I'm glad I got a hold of you finally. Um, did you get my message? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have some time available now that works for you. Oh, that's perfect. Could you meet us? We're uh, staying in this cabin outside of town. I can, um, I can text you the address. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that'll work. I'll, I'll be there. Great. Oh, thank you so much. Um, we'll see you soon then. See you then. Bye. All right. See what she's got to say. All right. Um, tell us who you are. I'm Kennedy Barnes. And Dakota was my boyfriend. What was Dakota like before he went missing? He, he was struggling. Um, well, that would, that would be the best way to describe it anyways. What was he struggling with? Um, I'm sorry. Um... I'm just, I'm, I'm scared to talk so openly about him like this. Well, we, we want you to be as upfront as possible. We just need, I need to know what happened to him. Um, he, well, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I don't know, I'm sorry. Please, I Kennedy, it's okay, just take your time, okay? Okay. You know, he, he wasn't well, um, about... A month before he went missing, we we saw something outside of town. What what did you both see? I I, did, I just wanted to forget about it, you know, just forget about the whole thing. Forget about what? Kennedy? It chased us. Whatever we seen out there, it chased us in the in the car for a little bit, and I I barely seen it, but. God, Dakota saw it. He saw it, and he did not take his eyes off of it. Um, but, but, but before that, though, he, he did go out and walk towards it. What chased you? What what exactly did Dakota see? Um, I, I can't really d describe it. It was more like 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 lights, and and it was following us. And, and as it got closer, you could hear like this uh, like swishing sound. Was it an animal? I thought so. You described it as lights. Why? Yeah, you know how how an animal's eyes shine like when when lights hit them, like um, like like on, on a deer, on a deer. E yes. Okay, so it was like that. But they kept glowing even after we turned around and drove away. They were glowing. Yes. A deep red glow. Okay, so after this, what happened? Well, after that, he could not forget about it. Um, night terrors, he didn't want to sleep, he could barely even close his eyes. He was just so scared. He, he said he kept seeing those eyes. So we talked to the people at the restaurant that you guys worked at together, where you two met. Uh, he said that your apartment together looked pretty bad. Well, yeah, after a while, I went to live with my parents. I could not watch him fall apart anymore. And, and he was writing so much more. He, he didn't write much before, but... God. After that, he was obsessive. He drew out every single dream he had. Why was he doing that? 
He said it helped him make sense sense of them. Like it was one big puzzle he was trying to figure out. Did you ever read any of them? Yep, nothing really made sense. Um, okay, they said that you left the lease on the place. Uh, and Officer Nelson talked about his possessions. Do you know what happened to his belongings? I still have it. How much of it? All of it. Can we take a look, Kennedy? Kennedy. Uh, no, no, no. No. That stuff belonged to my brother. Look, like he wasn't well. I have an obligation, no. No. an obligation to review the material. No, he to wasn't find out well. What happened to no, him. I'm not gonna let you see his stuff and put it on the for the world to see. Okay, no. I understand that you've been through a lot, Kennedy. That's not happening. Just let me see his things. No, where the fuck have you been? Huh? Where were you ever looking for him? I didn't see you by our sides. Kennedy, <laughs> let me don't get this straight. Understand. You just now show up. Look, he was hurting. All right, he, he was looking for answers. He was lost. We just didn't know it. And it took me a long time to move past the emotional damage I had that your brother had caused me. So I have no interest in bringing this back up anymore. You don't know me. Really, you don't. So you don't get to just come in here and demand to see anything, all right? But I know you, Amanda. And you can take your questions and shove it up your ass. with Kennedy. That's an understatement. What do you think of her story? She seemed really torn up. Yeah, I believe her. She seemed pretty credible. Yeah. She's pretty mad at you too. Yeah. Hey, don't beat yourself up, Amanda. You didn't know what was going on. It's easier said than done. I know, but... Just... Just turn the light off. I'm just gonna go to bed. What the hell's that? No clue. not. This is of great importance to you. What is this about? I am aware you are here investigating the disappearance of your brother. We are? What about it? I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask that you do not speak to anyone else on this matter. Who are you? The purpose of my arrival is of no relevance to you. You will not find the answers for which you seek. It is best you finish your project and leave Wither Falls. Bullshit. Very well. been warned. Warned? Enjoy your stay in Willard Falls. What the fuck was 
that? I told you I should have brought my damn gun. Where's this car at? Uh, no clue. Do you have a light on the camera charged? Okay? Am I staying where you want me? No, 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 you're fine. All right, great. Okay, uh, tell us who you are. My name is Matt Long. I'm a lieutenant here to Wither Falls Fire and EMS. I also belong to the OSRT, the Ohio Special Response Team. We organize and we organize and uh, conduct search and rescue efforts. Okay, thank you. Um, can you tell us how the efforts took place? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we knew of Dakota's location, about the location of his vehicle. His girlfriend also told us where he likes to travel in the forest there. So we took that information, put it into a grid, and started from there. How many, um, how many people helped? Um, agencies from all over the area sent people in to help run the search, but most of the effort was from residents of Weather Falls. Can you describe what happened the day that um, you recovered the items? Yeah, so we was on our second pass on day four. We didn't find on the first pass, which was hard to believe because we searched in and around those areas before. Um, either way, we found his cell phone and his keys. Did, uh, did Drake tell you how we found that stuff? Um, no, no, he didn't tell us. Okay, well we found his cell phone propped up on a pile of rocks, real weird, um, just outside of one of those farm sheds, an old outhouse. Um, weird place, you know, it's, I wouldn't want to be out there by myself at night. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, you hear stories growing up about um, Ohio's got Bigfoot, the frog people from Loveland. Just, just something's not right out there. Are you saying they're haunted almost? Um, Kennedy said that they'd seen something out there before. Well, I don't know. It's just bullshitting. People always ask why the state bought up all that land and never did anything with it. Who called off the search? Uh, we really hit a snag. We, we knew he went into the woods. We knew he went in by himself, but he never came back out. Right, but who called it off? Drake called it off after he, had, he interviewed Kennedy Lawrence. Just what I heard through the grapevine. Can you tell me where this was? Yeah, if we head over to the truck here, I'll pull out a survey map we have, and then we'll, I'll show you there. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. So if you take Route 4, take it out of town for about 6 miles, there's a pull off on the right side. Okay. The trail is open and advertised on the left side, directly across the pull off. Okay. You've been a tremendous help. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. I hope you guys find what you're looking for. Just be careful out there. We will. Okay, we got about 70% battery life. Well, get it charged then. We want full battery to keep that light running tonight. Light running? Yeah, we're going back out there tonight. Is that a good idea? I want to know what it was like for him out there. What that place holds. Maybe... Maybe all the people that were searching for him weren't out there at the right time.
are we ghost hunters now? Because this shit is turning into that. Something weird is going on here. And it starts and ends on that trail out there. And it would look great for the film if we could actually get something on film. What are we going to get? I don't know. Maybe those red eyes? <laughs> okay. Um... That, uh, that cop from earlier, you have his number still, right? Uh, yeah, I got his number. Okay, awesome. Um, turn that thing off. Get the battery started. Okay. Come on. Alright, looks like we found it. Are you ready? Uh, not in the fucking slightest. <laughs> such a good baby. Uh, well, he did show up. I figured he would. Probably doesn't have anything better to do in this big town. Well, uh, we appreciate you uh, meeting us out here. Yeah, it's no problem. So, do you have to come out here often? Uh, you know, I come out here uh, every once in a while just to check the place out. Uh, I get calls every once in a while just to, you know, see what's going on. And, uh, do you know who owns this property out here? Uh, it used to be owned by an old married couple, uh, Bill and Martha something. I don't know, they didn't have any family or kids, and the state ended up buying it. So they, uh, searched this area with dogs, right? That's correct. I don't know how they can't, couldn't find any sign of him out here. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I mean, you know, the search and rescue, they're not perfect, but, you know, they're pretty accurate with what they do. Did you guys hear something? What was that? Don't mess with me. I wasn't. What's going on? I heard something. Get out of here, let's go. It's Dakota though. It's not Dakota, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, man, come on. Hey, let's go guys, come on. Go, go. We, um, encountered something tonight. Something weird. I felt like, um, I felt Dakota was talking to me. Like, in my thoughts. I know that's crazy. I just don't know anymore. What are you thinking? It was uh, kind of strange, right? I mean, we show up and experience something right off the bat. Amanda. Hey. Amanda, 
what's next for us? Hey, Amanda. What's next for us? What? What do you want to do? I guess we um, can talk to that detective again. Okay, why? I just, I feel like that Officer Brad, I felt like when I talked to him, everything he said was just, it was like it was scripted. And I feel like that detective knows more than he's letting on. It's just too weird. All this shit that's happening. Our encounter out in the woods. Yeah. Well, let's do it. You okay? I feel... Let's um, let's get ready so we can go talk to that detective again. I'm, I know that he's kn knows more than what he's letting on, and I just just pisses me off. I just want to know what happened to my fucking brother. Okay. I, mean, I mean, it's early still. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my clothes on and we can go. Okay. so I don't need to discuss it with you. Well, we already talked to Kennedy, and she's not giving any of it up. As far as this person, you're going to have to speak to Kennedy. We already talked to her. You're going to have to try harder, Amanda. God, big fucking help you are. And stop fucking with us. Hurry, let's hurry up and shoot this before it starts swarming. Amanda, calm down. What are you doing here? We saw it last night. Out in the woods. I... I heard Dakota in my thoughts. Okay, hold on a second. Is able to get before I had to move. Um, uh, his, his drawings are on there. His, his notes, SD card. Uh, they took his laptop. Well, I was never able to get that back. Um, but his cell phone's in there. I really hope this helps. Yeah, I hope so too. I did use it. I hope this helps too. If you need anything, just you have my number. Please find it.
see it. Dakota, Dakota, what are you? Dakota! What the fuck are you doing, Dakota? Stop! What are you doing? Dakota! Get in the fucking car! No, I stop! Get in the fucking car, you crazy! Go! Get in the fucking car! Why would you do that? Why would you fucking do that, Dakota? Oh my god, what the fuck was that? It's been a few days since I really got to sleep at all. Kennedy too, she she won't admit it, but it's true. I've been doing some research on what I think we saw. And I had a feeling that's what it was. So I pretty much decided that, uh, yeah. What Kennedy and I saw was a phenomenon that's been going on for decades, if not centuries. Who knows? But this is what I saw. What I believe we experienced was an entity that's known as the Mothman. I don't know what this means, but it's gotta mean something. This was real. As real as I can comprehend. What are you doing in here? Work starts soon. I'm just doing a video log. You know you can talk to me about anything, anytime, just... I know, I know. You're okay, right? I'm gonna be okay. I love you. I love you too, babe, thank you. Okay, we gotta go. Okay. I plan on figuring out why this all happened something I can feel is calling for me. But I don't know what. I'm gonna figure it out. All right, so I'm back out here. Hopefully I can find something. really found anything while I was driving around or anything. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm out here. This trail is the closest thing that I could find, but God, it is creepy as fuck. I mean, I do have this decent phone rig all set up. I mean, this light is really good on it, so it can't all be too bad. God, this trail just looks so familiar, too. I feel like I've been here before, but I don't know. I can't really describe it. It's just one of those feelings, I guess. field before too. This is interesting. I just don't know when. I feel something here. It's like a burning in the pit of my stomach. 
this place, though. It means something. It's the same thing I felt when I was out here that night. So I was reviewing the footage from the other day. Honestly, it still really bothers me. I got a few days off from work here and I was actually able to go to that thrift shop uptown and I got a couple books from there that I think will help me out. I think I need to go to Point Pleasant, West Virginia. There's this author there that I think will help me. Um, Kennedy doesn't want to go, but I think it's important. I mean, he, he hasn't responded to any of my emails, and I don't even have a phone number, but I really think it's important for me to talk to him. You know, finding people online who are willing to talk about this kind of stuff is really difficult, and Point Pleasant is really only an hour away. I mean, everybody probably knows of the Mothman from that movie that was kind of popular, and the History Channel runs documentaries on this stuff all the time, but it's not limited to Point Pleasant. This kind of stuff has happened all over the world. I think he can help me. And there it is, the Mecca of the Mothman. Excuse me? I can tell by how you stand, the look in your eyes. But, what do you mean by that? You'll be right on your whole life, kid. What? What are you talking about? Lots of people here have to. You're not alone. Hey! Could you tell me where Max Anderson lives? Elm Street. White House. Hey, how's it going? Can I help you? Hi, um, uh, my name is Dakota. You're um, Max Anderson, the writer, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. You mind if I come in and talk for a minute? Um, let me talk to my wife, situate my kids, and um, you can come in. Just give me one minute. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Do your thing. So what are you here for? I'm basically just trying to tell my story here, but uh, you're what some would consider an expert on Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant. Is that right? Some would say yes. I've lived here my whole life. Um, Point Pleasant is, is my heart. It's my home. They used to tell us when we were younger, don't go down near the TNT bunker. The Mothman will get you. Very nice. Um, I, I have read your book, actually, and there's a lot that stood out to me. 
you wouldn't claim that uh, Mothman is your standard cryptid now, is that correct? That is correct. I would say that Mothman is is more than your your typical beast, your Bigfoot or your Chupacabra. Mothman transcends time and space. Could you explain that? Well, Mothman is often re referred to as the harbinger of doom. Uh, death and chaos often follow um, Mothman sightings. Okay. All right. Now, you've written about portals as well. Yes, yes. It's, it's not your typical type of portal, you might think, like Star Trek, Beam Me Up, Scotty. It's more like an interdimensional portal. Um, Mothman shows up when he wants to show up. Uh, it, it may be for decades. It, it, it just depends on when he wants to show up, wherever he wants to. Can I be honest here? Sure, kid. I've seen it. Where? In Ohio, where I'm from. There were sightings in Cincinnati in 1986. I think I've heard about that before. Yeah. Um, honestly, my uh, my girlfriend and I, Kennedy, um, she's seen it as well, but nobody else that I know of. Have you had night terrors? Yeah. Have you heard voices in your head? No. They will come. Do not listen to them. Okay. Have you seen the man in the gray jacket? The man in the gray jacket? No. Who? He picks and chooses who he talks to. Okay. Um, no, I, that is, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The man in the gray jacket, no. Okay. You need to remain strong. That's how you're going to get through this. I'm, I, I'm trying, but it's becoming incredibly difficult. I understand, and it will be. But you have to remain strong, and you can persevere, okay? Okay. Thank you for talking with me today. Yes. Please keep in touch, okay? I will. Thanks, Max. So I just got back from Point Pleasant. I tried to call my sister, but... She didn't answer. Kennedy won't talk to me about anything either, but I shouldn't expect her to. I just have no idea which direction I should go in. I can hear him now, speaking to me. Only when it gets real quiet. It floods in and infects every single thought in my mind. It crawls in and infects every thought. I can't think of anything straight anymore. How do we know? How do we know how many people have seen him? Most people, they're just driven mad before they even have a chance to come forward. Am I though? I mean, I've dealt in the past with depression and shit, but this is schizophrenia level stuff. Maybe there's something wrong with us. You know, those who've seen him, 
I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out a way to deal with this shit. Maybe one day I'll start listening to the voices in my head. They're starting to make more sense than I do now. It's been a minute since my last video. Kennedy's gone. <laughs> Living with her parents. And I lost my job two weeks ago. I can't remember when the last time I slept was. I can't tell anymore, really. I, I can't tell. I can't tell what eyes see. What hands feel, or what ears hear. Kennedy knows, she knows I'm experiencing something, but she does not understand the gravity of the situation. Something big is coming, but I don't know what. The only thing that I know is real are those burning red eyes. I see them every time I close my eyes. Even though Max said it would go away, it hasn't. And I can't stop this from happening. I'm finally giving in. My dreams. These voices in my head! They're all calling for me to return. They're all calling for me to return. On the footage, he's gone. We're in danger. We need to get out of here. I don't think he's gone. What makes you think that? Something's telling me that he's here still. Amanda, we're not safe. We're I'm, we're in danger. We saw that same guy that was here with him. We need to get out of here. Amanda. Come on, 
Let's go. What are you doing? What? He will do as you wish, if you allow him. Come on, let's go. Do you wish to see your brother again? He can help. <laughs> Fuck this! Fuck. Amanda! Amanda! No! Amanda! It's not your brother! Stop! I'm Tim Sellers. I'm, I, uh, I was Amanda Mason's boyfriend. It's been a few months since the incidents you witnessed occurred in Weather Falls. I cut together the film you just watched. I wanted to showcase what we experienced and hopefully shed some light on this whole subject. In the, uh, in the weeks following Amanda's disappearance, I learned that Wither Falls is home to more than just what we witnessed, as Dakota described Mothman. There is something seriously wrong with that place. And hopefully someone investigates it more thoroughly. Since Amanda disappeared, uh, I haven't slept much. I do know I never stared it directly in its eyes, though. Maybe that's why I'm still here. I discussed everything I could with the Masons, uh, Sandra and Mark. They agreed to allow me to assemble this film. I can only slightly begin to understand what it is the entity uh, we experienced wanted. I read through some of Dakota's journals. I have all of his things. His, his parents didn't want any of this stuff and I don't blame them. He had premonitions of disaster, giving himself up to the entity uh, he believed would delay that event. Two years later, Wither Falls remained untouched by any massive tragedy. Then we show up and our presence reawakens it. Maybe it was Amanda's bleeding heart that let it know we were there. I caught up with Mark not too long ago. He said they closed off the area entirely out where Dakota went missing. And that, uh, that lodge too is uh, under renovation. No one 
else should ever have to experience what we have. Um, uh, Officer Nelson, he's missing now too. Poor bastard. One thing I know for sure is we did experience something out there. And I will never be the same again. Hopefully you never have to either. All right guys, I need this documented. I need it documented for 
various reasons, mostly just to get off my chest, to have it out there in case I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but it, it needs to be here or somewhere, wherever this is. It's gonna, this is gonna be uploaded. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep it as anonymous or whatever as I can. I know I'm showing my face here, but those who can access these will access them. I didn't think things could get any worse since Olympic County. I transferred a while ago. I was a rookie then. <laughs> I don't even know how to process that yet. So I left, I came here. I came here in the woods, I'm a park ranger. And it's almost like things began to follow me here too. And I, I mean things, things as in like bad luck. I don't know, I had red glowing eyes, piercing fear for anybody that saw it and yet I think I saw it too I saw it it was big it was it was dark but the red eyes the piercing red eyes is what resonated with me the most I vowed a while ago not to hide anything anymore <laughs> don't know if that's a good decision or a bad decision but I brought it to my supervisor and next thing you know I'm being relocated to Tennessee the Great Smoky Mountains but I can't get over the fact that this feeling in my chest, this, this, I don't know, it, it, it's like a, it's like a, how do I want to word it? It's like a uh, feeling of despair. Being in Tennessee, like I mentioned, the Great Smoky Mountains, um, whatever's going on is uh, going to stay here and not follow me there. I guess only time will tell. Until then.